this video is going to be on the civil rights as well as the uh, Cold War um, from the United States perspective. With the civil rights, we're going to be looking at a few laws that came into place, much more so than actual people. Um, and so that would uh, include the Jim Crow laws, um, Plessy versus Ferguson Supreme Court case, as well as uh, Brown versus Board of Education. So those are definitely three things that you want to be uh, familiar with. And then we'll also touch on uh, the Cold War between the United States and Russia from the time period of after World War II lasting until uh, 1989. Okay, so let's see what we should know. Jim Crow laws were state and local laws that enforced racial segregation in the southern United States. Enacted by white, democratic-dominated state legislators in the late 19th century after the Reconstruction period. Uh, remembering the Re Reconstruction period is the time period right after the Civil War um, where the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments came into place, which ended slavery, among other things. These laws continued to be enforced until 1965, meaning the Jim Crow laws continued to be enforced until 1965. Public education had essentially been segregated since its establishment in most of the South after the Civil War. This principle was extended to public facilities and transportation, including segregated, segregated cars on interstate trains and later buses. Facilities for African Americans were consistently inferior and underfunded compared to those which were then available to European Americans. Sometimes they did not exist at all. These Jim Crow law laws revived principles of the 1865 and 1866 Black Codes, which had previously restricted the civil rights and civil liberties of African Americans. Segregation of public state-sponsored schools were declared unconstitutional by the Supreme Court of the United States in 1954. In some states, it took a year to implement this decision. Generally, the remaining Jim Crow laws were overruled by the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965. So we'll get into those as well. Okay, so Plessy versus Ferguson. In 1896, the Plessy v. Ferguson U.S. Supreme Court case upheld the constitutionality of segregation under the separate but equal doctrine. It stemmed from an 1892 incident in which African-American train passenger Homer Plessy refused to sit in a Jim Crow car, breaking a Louisiana law. Rejecting Plessy's argument that his constitutional rights were violated, the court ruled that a state law that implies merely a legal distinction between whites and blacks did not conflict with the 13th and 14th amendments. Restrictive legislation based on race continued following the Plessy-Ferguson. Its reasoning was not overturned until Brown versus Board of Education of Topeka in 1954. Okay, so what you're essentially seeing here is that this case in 1896 upheld the constitution constitutionality of segregation uh, under the terms separate but equal when referring to African Americans and whites. And then this changes with the Brown, Brown versus Board of Education in 1954. On May 17, 1954, the United States Supreme Court handed down its ruling in the landmark case of Brown versus Board of Education of Topeka, Kansas. The court's unanimous decision overturned provisions of the 1896 Plessy versus Ferguson decision, which we just heard about, which had allowed for separate but equal public facilities, including public schools in the United States, declaring that separate educational facilities are inherently unequal the Brown versus Board decision helped break the back of state-sponsored segregation and provided a spark to the American Civil Rights Movement. So this is a huge court case that we definitely have to know, right? Brown versus Board of Education ends state-sponsored 
segregation and is really kind of like a lightning bolt for the civil rights movement that comes over the later years of the 1950s and into the 1960s. Okay, then we have the Great Society. The Great Society was a set of domestic programs in the United States launched by Democratic President Lyndon B. Johnson in 1964 and 1965. The main goal was the elimination of poverty and racial injustice. New major spending programs that addressed education, medical care, urban problems, rural poverty, and transportation were launched during this period. The program and its initiatives were subsequently promoted by him and fellow Democrats in Congress in the 1960s and in the years that followed. The Great Society in scope and sweep resembled the New Deal domestic agenda of Franklin Roosevelt. Some of the elements of the Great Society continue to this day, including Medicare, Medicaid, the Older Americans Act, and federal education funding. The Voting Rights Act, signed into law by President Johnson on August 6, 1965, aimed to overcome legal barriers at the state and local levels that was preventing African Americans from exercising their right to vote under the 15th Amendment to the Constitution. The act significantly widened the franchise and is considered among the most far-reaching pieces of civil rights legislation in U.S. history. While this is not part of the Great Society, we also should uh, mention that on Election Day in 1920, millions of American women exercised the right to vote for the first time. It took activists and reformers nearly a hundred years to win that right, and the campaign was not easy. Disagreements over strategy threatened to cripple the movement more than once. But on August 26, 1920, the 19th Amendment to the Constitution was finally ratified, franchising all American women and declaring for the first time that they, like men, deserve all the rights and responsibilities of citizenship. So that's an amendment that you need to be familiar with. The 19th Amendment gives women the right to vote in 1920. Okay, and then let's look at the, the Cold War. Growing out of post-World War II tensions between the two nations, the Cold War rivalry between the United States and the Soviet Union that lasted for much of the second half of the 20th century resulted in mutual suspicions, heightened tensions, and a series of international incidents that brought the world's superpowers to the brink of disaster. Historians do not fully agree on the dates, but a common time frame is the period between 1947, which was the year of the Truman Doctrine. The Truman Doctrine is a U.S. Force foreign policy pledging to aid, aid nations threatened by Soviet expansionism. And 1991, the year the Soviet Union collapsed. The term cold is used, is used because there was no large-scale fighting directly between the two countries involved in the conflict. The USSR, Russia, was a Marxist-Lenist state led by its Communist Party of the Soviet Union. The party controlled the press, the military, the economy, and many organizations. In opposition stood the West, generally democratic and capitalistic, with a free press and independent organizations. The United States began its opposition of communism and made great efforts to make sure that communism did not spread. This was one of the main reasons for the U.S. involvement in the Vietnam War.